Uh, hello and welcome everyone to the first uh, uh, virtual conference by Entrepreneur India and powered by BusinessX.com. Uh, today's discussion will uh, revolve around impact on funding, myths and aftermath of COVID-19. I'm Saurav Kumar, Editor of Special Projects, Entrepreneur India, your host for the session. Uh, today, amid these uh, unprecedented circumstances, going to the novel coronavirus outbreak, uh, we are going to try and find answers to some of the questions that may have cropped up uh, in the business community. Uh, first, uh, but let me start by laying out the ground rules for our attendees. Uh, the discussion will last for uh, 40 minutes, and this will be followed by a question and answer session for the next 20 minutes. If you have any questions during the course of the discussion, you can post them through the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. Mention in your question if it is directed at any specific panelist. We will take up the questions post the panel discussion. We would also like to request the attendees to keep the questions within the scope of the discussion here today and not fix businesses. Uh, let me now introduce our uh, session moderator for today, Ms. Ritu Maria, the Editor-in-Chief of Entrepreneur India and Asia Pacific. Our panelists today are Mr. Sandeep Murthy, Partner Lightbox, Mr. Sanjay Swami, uh, Managing Partner, Prime Venture Partners, Ms. Anjali Bansal, Founder, Avana Capital, Mr. Tej Kapoor, Co-Executive President Kosun, Mr. Ashish Safadia, Partner Bloom Ventures, Mr. P. S. Kanan Sitaram, Venture Partner, Fireside Ventures. I would now request uh, Ms. Maria to start the session. Over to you, Ms. Maria. Thank you very much and uh, very good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us in this discussion, which is basically going to be sort of revolving around funding and its impact. Uh, both during the COVID as well as post the COVID. Um, you know, we, were, we've been talking about disruption uh, and, you know, how we're going to change things and change the world with the startups and various ideas that are out there. And here we are all sitting today getting disrupted ourselves. Nature has played its role and uh, uh, we were in a very unusual circumstances. Uh, where, And I can, you know, bet upon it that even till 10th of March, we really didn't know that everything was going to come to such a grinding halt. So there's barely been any preparedness for everybody to figure out what is the way forward. And therefore, uh, you know, we've got this eminent panel here today, which is going to give us at least the first uh, insights into what, what could be uh, expected in business and economic activity, uh, both during the coming days as well as the days going forward. So uh, thank you very much to our eminent panel for joining us. And we look forward to having as we go in ahead in the next 40 minutes, we look forward to your Black Swan memo, so to say, coming out and sharing as to what uh, you feel is the best way forward, uh, both for startups as well as for uh, investments in the coming year. So let me start uh, by asking this question that particularly, you know, when a situation like this is there, which is almost like a natural disaster, how, what, is the, what is it that startups or young businesses, even small and medium businesses, should be doing today in order to get their act right, in order to be able to cover themselves and see that they can keep their head up of the water? So what, what are, how can they manage their monetary resources? How can they manage their managing resources to ensure that there is least impact their business will feel after the lockdown is over? So um, what, what is uh, it that you feel that startups should be doing and what are you advising them on uh, to keep floating? Sorry, did you say, I missed that. was that me that you were directing yes, it to? Absolutely. Yes, that's right. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so listen, I, I, I think that, uh, first of all, this is an unprecedented event and uh, we're very much in uncharted territory. So. I think the idea that um, there's a, a good answer or a known answer for this is, is hard to say. I would, I would say that um, just based on previous experiences of similar, I, I guess, situations where chaos wreaks havoc and um, you, you kind of sit back and say, okay, look, there's very little you control and there's very little you actually know about how things are going to progress. So preserving capital, extending runway, making sure that 
you're using the time to evolve your product, um, improve your customer experience. These are things, and, I, and I'm not going to go into them comprehensively because I think everyone else has their own way of communicating, and I think it'd be great to hear other people's views on it. But at least as a start, I'll say that I think one of the things that we've directed our companies to do is really say, look, focus on product, focus on customer experience. Um, once you've ensured that the runway exists and once we've ensured those things that happen, which I think others will talk a little bit about how we've done that or how they've done that, I think really making sure product is, uh, is differentiated and making sure you use this time to, to create a better experience. But um, I'll let others talk a little bit more about how to extend the runway. Sure. Um, Sanjay, what, what is it that uh, so Sanjay is from Prime Ventures and of course he's done his own startups in both there in the funding community as well. Uh, so Sanjay, what, what is your opinion of things? How, how can startups today remain, uh, you know, both uh, business sane as well as mentally sane uh, when circumstances are not really in their favor? Yeah, so um, uh, hi everybody. It's, um, you know, uh, certainly uh, hope, you know, there are going to be some good takeaways for everyone here on the, from the panelists. Uh, so definitely as Sandeep said, you know, preserving cash is right now, cash is the hardest uh, commodity to get and so that has to be uh, done in a very prudent manner and whether that means you know cutting your uh, spends cutting your um, uh, you know salaries you know hopefully retaining as much of your team as you can uh, and we are telling everybody to have a very conservative outlook which is ideally you have the money you have should get you through december of next year but possibly uh, june of next year should be fine I'm sure there are others who have shorter time frames, but we've just taken sort of a, a worst case point of view. Uh, the other thing that is a little sobering is that many of your customers might also go out of business or might, might be downsizing or downscaling the proper project. So even the revenue that you have, uh, you should assume that probably 20, 30% of that is, is probably going to go away. And uh, the ramp up plans that they had might also slow down, right? So be very, very conservative in terms of the money on the table. Having said that, I think the most exciting thing uh, that should keep you going, and as Sandeep said, focus on product, there's a lot of nuances around what he said there, right? Uh, one is, uh, what is changing here is the behavior of the user, the fact that we are doing this video conference on Zoom, uh, whereas in the past it would probably have been an in-person thing with a social event and so on. Uh, that's becoming the new normal, right? And so uh, sales cycles, for example, might, uh, or, or sales processes might move from a, you know, come here and, you know, let's have a conversation to a remote conversation. And that might actually mean that, you know, if you're selling, you know, regionally in India, now all of India is available for you. If your product has a possibility of going global and you were waiting for the next round of funding in order to, you know, hire somebody in the US or in Southeast Asia, that may no longer be necessary because the company that is sitting in Palo Alto selling across the street on University Avenue to another customer might not be at any advantage over you who's sitting here in either Bangalore or Delhi or wherever or in, uh, you know, uh, in indoor, right? So that will create a lot of new opportunities as well. So our advice to people is obviously go conservative first with the cash, but very quickly start looking at where the opportunities are. Sure. Mr. Kanan, let me ask you this, you know, you're in the consumer lifestyle space. And today when, of course, you know, um, it is primarily when you cannot even step out or buy anything or even online companies are not going to deliver you anything, which is outside the normal. What, what is it that your advice is going to be to for B2C startups to really keep themselves afloat and also to be able to uh, sort of fight back or come back or bounce back very soon after this is all over? Uh, thanks, Ritu. You know, uh, all our companies are in the uh, product area. It's branded products. And we really look at uh, three groups of companies in our portfolio. One is where clearly the runway has to be extended. And we're working with them on how they can conserve cash, how, can, how they can extend the runway. And I think other people have spoken about that. Let me move on to the, the other bucket, which is uh, where we have a bunch of food companies. Most of these are falling into what the government is calling essentials. Now, uh, up to last week, we didn't see any reduction in demand for these guys. Demand was moving from being more offline to more online. But this week has been very different. Um, the lockdown has also led to a lot of disruption because uh, between the intention and the actual execution, there has been a lot of gap. 
And we are therefore working with all our companies in the essentials area to try and figure out what they need to do to resume uh, access to market. And we have been uh, trying to work with the larger companies. We're trying to work with the platform players, trying to get insights from all of them on what is the best way to actually get supplies back into the market. Because st uh, stores are open, uh, shelves are depleting, and therefore the priority is to get products onto the market. So that's another group of our companies. And the third group is uh, products which don't fall into the essentials area. There we are looking uh, uh, to work with them to say, hey, look, things are going to come back. There is going to be uh, a demand for products. We are only talking about largely a deferment of demand rather than a perishing of demand. So when you're talking about deferment of demand, how are you going to meet that? What's the kind of uh, changes you're going to see in the environment? And how are you getting ready for changes in that uh, environment? So it's really sure. three different sets of advisories which are going on from us. Right. Um, Ashish, let me come to you. Uh, you know, at Bloom Ventures, you're leading all uh, tech startups. So particularly, of course, you know, tech is perhaps one of the, the would be one of the least impacted uh, when it would really come down to we'll go out and evaluate things. But nevertheless, right, now not the best of times for any startup. So what is your advice to them? So uh, we we have clearly in uh, individual sessions, uh, apart from relaying up the generic message, uh, and we, uh, as large a portfolio as, it, uh, as we have, and as tough as, as it can get, we are still focused on doing these one-on-ones across the whole portfolio and uh, made sure that uh, there is an acknowledgement of the fact that uh, there is adequate uh, runway. We have spoken about it. And within that also, the utmost level of uh, conservativeness. So uh, driving uh, the teams to get into a sensitivity analysis. If it's a B2B company, uh, you will have the customers also facing uh, challenges and they might even get into expansion plans are really no one is talking. People are talking about by what level there will be deceleration. So to, that has to be absorbed in some sense uh, in a temporary scenario. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are also uh, telling the founders that there are going to be, uh, we are not going to be in a permanent lockdown situation. So things on what is happening immediately will come to a point where life uh, resumes after about another four to six weeks max. But things will still be slow. So prepare for that phase. Uh, it is not going to come back with a third. Uh, it has uh, stopped very suddenly. It won't start with the same degree of force. So yeah. you might have to uh, be very, very conservative and the uh, fundraise is going to be uh, as tough as well. So wherever you see uh, opportunities to conserve cash uh, without being overtly opportunistic, there are going to be vendors who will need payments. There are going to be people in the team where you have to keep the flows going. So without being overtly opportunistic, uh, be sensitive, but yet conserve cash. All right, this is a time where if you are a funded company, uh, you need to uh, create your own reputation and your brand, but at the same time have the right communication with all your stakeholders on what you're trying to do, create transparency uh, a little more than what you already have. Uh, and don't expect business to be as usual for uh, at least the short term. Sure. Uh, let me come to you, Anjali. Um, so Anjali is from Avana Capital and uh, she's an expert in fintech startups. So where do you see uh, the change? You know, uh, financing is the life and blood of business and uh, the economy to actually fight in order to, and particularly in the fintech space, what's coming out over there? If I had a crystal ball, I could give you exactly the answer. I think the three things we are actually telling our, all our companies, fintechs or otherwise. One is, and it's already been said, conserve cash. Keep your cash safe. Um, look carefully at cost. But even before that, I think the, the first paramount thing is employee safety. There is a lockdown is because this is a highly contagious situation. So the first thing is keep your people safe. Business will happen if life continues. 
so things are dire keep your people safe uh, we put in business continuity plans in all our companies big and small the second thing we are urging them to do is look at what you can do to actually support and help this situation so for example in logistics essential goods and services flowing medicines food um grocery and thus for business but really the nation as a whole so the second message is what can you do at this time of the whole and the economy workers if they don't earn today if they don't work today they don't earn today they don't eat today so i think we have to start thinking about that as well so startups have as much of a responsibility as to big companies the third thing for some somewhat early stage investors we invest in innovation led an innovation driven stronger so if they can survive this they will come out stronger more differentiated and very well positioned we are going to see a fairly significant shift uh even more significant shift to digital than we have seen in the past correct virtual working the way we live the way we work the way we consume will change you know already news people have stopped getting newspapers so once you get used to digital that shift will continue so more digital finance more digital consumption and thus those companies that are using tech platforms to deliver whether it is fintech or what is fintech after all it's delivery of financial products but on an online digital way so fintech companies consumer tech companies logistics companies that are using digital platforms these are the ones that are actually even today the larger economy and indeed the government itself is turning to turning to to facilitate the continued movement of goods and services Sure. So three things: yeah, keep I, your people I, I, safe, keep, keep your cash safe. So that's one. Two is, is think about what you can do to help and support. Uh, and three is innovation. Will lead to right. survive. I think in the post-COVID world, also, hopefully, if anything, this teaches us. Uh, a little bit more mindful consumption and uh more aware growth and um this whole idea of just growth for the sake of growth has to to kind of take a back seat and be reassessed um and in many ways you could argue that this is the planet kicking back at us against all the irrational um activities that we've done over the past past many decades and i think quite honestly uh we've learned how to do business now on zoom we've learned not not to have to travel at the drop of a hat i think that companies will be lower on cash by default as a result travel will reduce yet business will need to continue i think more intelligent growth will come about other aspects uh, I, i would hope consumer behavior changes in i think that will create interesting opportunities going forward sure uh, tej let me also come to you and uh, you know you've done investments uh, in fortune as well as in your ventures uh, both inside india as well as globally as well so you know and today when most startups think of global as soon as they start do you think there is going to be some impact some changes and how do startups now prepare for expansion which plans which is really and you know you as investors also bring the scale uh, to these startups to these organizations so what what is the preparation likely to be at this point? yeah thank you so much uh, so i'm just going to not repeat what everybody has said and i agree with uh, most of the last forever uh, i mean in china uh, we have started to see uh, recovery happening uh, so there is a uh, light at the end of the tunnel so i don't think world is coming to an end uh, but obviously like most of the panelists said that the way we do business is going to change um, and which will throw new opportunities and i totally agree with sandeep um, you know there were like so much uh, uh thought and overvaluation uh which now will you know settle down a bit um yeah so you know i think that what we are seeing uh, uh is that time uh, so we invest in china us india and israel um 
a lot of, and you know, like you have to, one thing I just want to say is as you guys are going through this phase, just over communicate, uh, communication is, is key and very important, whether it is to your investors, it's to your employees, it's to the larger world, just go out there and, uh, tell them about the situation. A lot of our companies, um, have renegotiated their rents. Um, you know, some even smaller things and cutting down on your marketing expense, um, focusing on product, like a lot of people said, um, the recovery will, you know, happen. It is bound to happen. And, uh, you know, uh, it is, and I think, uh, prime minister Modi has done the right thing, even though 75% of economy is offline, but we require that right now because, uh, human safety is. Um, is most important at this at this pivotal moment. Um, so uh, it's not that uh, doing the measures um, which we put forward in the front will obviously help in terms of you know pulling this um, uh, pandemic, right? Uh, which is what is happening. That panelists have said. On top of it, uh, over communicate. Um, and recovery could be anywhere between today um, and in China. I think six to twelve months is uh, is is a good period when you can see uh, things coming back. Um, and also the business will change. So I think it will put pressure on on company. Cut out your marketing expense, which is you know throwing money for buying customers. You will really see who are your real honest customers who stick with you. Um, SaaS companies are not seeing that much of a hit, quite frankly. They are, uh, you know, which were working remotely, like fresh works in China, obviously, will suffer. FinTech will suffer for a short term. Uh, travel is suffering. We are investors in both Make My Trip and Exigo. Uh, but at the same time, they're utilizing their time now to build product, uh, like Sandy was saying, you know, focusing their tech teams to see how innovatively they can solve. Um, and some of the businesses will thrive, for example, communication businesses, social businesses, online, um, online consumption of news, and as well as gaming. So you have to figure out where you fit, uh, utilize your workforce, keep them motivated, very, very important. Um, I mean, it is uh, difficult circumstances, but you are the leader. Um, and you have to motivate your people and keep yourself uh, healthy. Um, recovery will come, no sure. doubt about Thanks, it. Thanks, Sage. Um, you know, now, uh, on another level, uh, I would like to understand <laughs> that history is ripe with examples, and whenever the recession or a slowdown is hitting, unicorns have been born. So now, as investors, what are the lenses you are going to have, uh, particularly post-COVID, to look at sectors or evaluate sectors where you want to make investments? Uh, what are the areas that you at least, you know, so as you said, uh, very rightly, Tage, that we need to think of future products now. So as investors, what are the lenses that you are now working on? Uh, what are the areas you are looking at or identifying where you would like to see or park future investments? So let me start with you, Tej. Um So, yeah, we obviously we are currently focusing a lot of our time. I think 80 percent of my time is going to work with our current portfolio companies. Um, so we have um, sort of slowed down, um, uh, you know, kind of um, looking at new companies. Um, but uh, this is, again, a great time to, uh, to buy. Um, so we are also invested, like I said, in Make My Trip. Uh, the stock is down at uh, $12. Um, we are definitely going to invest more. Um, and similarly, we are looking at opportunistically some of the businesses which we liked from before um, where, you know, we can actually get in. Uh, so that's one. And second is, um, you know, where some of the sectors we were not thinking about um, as investors, I think we are taking a long term view in terms of um, how these will evolve. Just one is healthcare. Um, you know, we have only one for one bed for or one doctor for 40,000 uh, patients in, um, in India. Uh, you know, it is ridiculously low and only only way this can be solved is through tech. So we are looking, um, you know, we're building our thesis while we're taking this time to build our thesis on, on the healthcare. And uh, I'm sorry to say, but this is not the end of viruses. I think there will be more, uh, maybe not of this magnitude, but more, um, you know, more events like this. Bill Gates spoke about it. So we, we're looking at healthcare um, uh, in, a, in a bigger way. We already have investment in gland pharma. 
uh, and also you know consumer businesses uh, we are we are going to halt for now um, till um, till you know the recovery happens because i think it will take some time for people to bring back the discretionary discretionary spend uh, fintech uh, investments also we are taking a uh, you know a back seat on um, you know because we believe that it will take some time uh, for them to come back and we are going to focus on online education one of the biggest beneficiary uh, of um, of covid would be online education uh, so we are deep into it and see what we can do and also some of the communication companies sure um, sandeep let me ask you this uh that do you see particularly a lot of merger and acquisitions by of big startups uh you know acquiring small startups you know from a product development perspective happening because obviously uh, needless to say that the same amount of or the same frenzy of funding that we have been seeing in 2019 would probably not come back or not at least as soon in probably like quarter 3 or quarter 4 of uh, 2020 so Do you see that happening uh, in the next few months? So I guess uh, M and A is always one of those things that um, everyone would like to see happen to find liquidity. I think uh, in a case where you may end up in situations with lots of uh, stressed or um, I guess uh, companies without enough cash flow in their businesses, putting two sick companies together will not necessarily make a healthy business. so unless there's true product differentiation which unfortunately quite honestly i think of the last couple of years too much attention has been paid on just growing the user base um indiscriminate spend on cac not enough true product differentiation so in the few instances perhaps where we do see that and there are perhaps stronger players who feel like okay this the, the product might actually accelerate that for them I, i think absolutely there will be an opportunity for that however that being said I'm a little bit uh, probably skeptical about whether that's going to happen a, at a scale or even at values that will necessarily be exciting for anybody. I, I do think though that when we just set out with our new fund, and and one of the things that we identified as, as two areas that we're focused on are climate-related um, efforts and social-related efforts, and and we didn't didn't do either of these because we're trying to be a green fund or an impact fund. We simply said that these are two factors that will impact consumption going forward. And so as a consumer fund if you're on the wrong side of things that impact that I think over time you'll either be regulated out or consumers will walk away from you. And so I think that going forward what we we are hopeful to see and perhaps your M&A can come in, in in this lens as well if companies have found themselves on the right side of the the coin of figuring out how to be more mindful about the environment as they're building products be more aware of the social impact that they're having um they just talked about doctors and and addressing healthcare issues or education issues I mean, wherever you may fall on that spectrum if you're doing it in a way that is uh is more more aware of the the residual impact that you have i think that there's going to be a, a tremendous interest from both domestic and global players and because i think at one level in some of these issues india is operating at a scale that is um only one other country has and uh therefore as a result it's a an interesting place in which to actually scale some of these ideas up and perhaps then actually take them elsewhere and and do a lack of incumbent in some of the traditional areas and perhaps with the 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 downfall a, a deterioration of more incumbents i think there'll be a uh, interesting businesses emerge from that sure um ashish sanjay i would like both of you to sort of one by one answer this that uh, do you really feel that uh, valuations would again uh, sort of uh, so the valuations of startups will get revised you know obviously the stock markets are taking a tumble and startups that can never be far behind so do you think the real valuations with which they went to next round of funding and so on would take a hit and what could be the revised valuations or what is it that we are likely to see uh, in terms of valuations for startups in the coming months sure uh, okay. uh, sanjay i'll go first yeah yeah go ahead so uh, i think whether we like it or not uh valuations uh, are already in some sense being a uh, question so even when you have uh, uh things moving towards a uh, point where there are term sheets uh, around uh, people are ask their ics and boards are asking questions to the investing teams uh, on whether the current scenario needs to be factored or adjusted uh, while some of these reactions one can uh, sitting from the outside one can say uh why on earth are you overreacting if all of you unanimously do believe that the india story ain't changing 
the long term growth map uh, ain't altering uh, so far as this side of the world in asia is concerned and venture is a 5 10 year game so why are we having knee jerk reactions and adjusting valuations downward that said one can't really rule out uh, that uh, there there is going to be a fair bit of combination of uh, data and data kind of starts trumping intuition and uh, uh, vision and passion at this juncture so uh, wherever possible uh, there is going to be uh, this tendency to look at asking harsh and hard questions on whether we valued stuff right uh, and one can't deny the fact that uh, as sandeep rightly mentioned that there was a thrust on uh, user engagement uh, user acquisition uh, so unfortunately even the companies where there are strong operating models may get scanned but i think this is a good opportunity for companies with strong business models while valuations may stand to be corrected people will ask hard questions and if you don't have the economics going in your favor uh, there will be downward revisions uh, as well but it does in my view pose an opportunity to making sure that we create sane startups uh, in turn over the next 2 years it in my view it might even accelerate and make it convenient and possible for companies to go and create exit opportunities by listing etc because the foundations would probably be uh, laid down as things start getting normalized uh, right. yes there is a challenge but i do see i would like to try and see if we can convert it into a opportunity for the ecosystem in general Okay, Sanjay. Yeah, uh, just to build on what Ashish said, we had a couple of term sheets that were out. Uh, we're not uh, revising them, but we are certainly telling the founders, look, whatever money you're getting now, assume this is going to take you through for whatever you. plus an extra you know ideally 6 to 9 months right so was that but the founders new founders should certainly expect and we do mainly see seed stage like a couple of others here like group for example i think realistically if you are getting money at a 6 or 7 million dollar valuation you are going to be getting it at a 3 or 4 million dollar valuation that's mm-hmm. something people have to face the reality and and guess what 5 years ago that's exactly where the market was right so this market does have some inflation and then will have some contraction the good news for founders however is that the cost of doing business is also going down right secondly you are not being penalized against anybody else in the market it's the overall market that that has come down right so the cost of doing business has come down i think uh, you know good companies as they say they don't die of uh, starvation but they can die of indigestion and when they have too much money they try to do too many things what we will see is a crop of startups that will be very laser focused on solving one problem and doing it really really well which is what a startup is supposed to do startup is not supposed to solve everybody's problem it's supposed to solve one problem really well for a large enough you know a niche of users right that's why otherwise uh, big companies would be solving everything right so uh, i think it will get much more discipline into startups they're going to focus on solving one problem as sandeep said you know focus on the customer focus on product focus on tech and do a really great job of it right so in some ways you know i don't think anybody should be disillusioned about this for seed stage companies i think all of us you know around the table here uh, that do seed you know we are constantly looking out so i don't think as entrepreneurs one should say let me just wait and think this thing will come back right you might just miss the opportunity because the opportunity might be now as well right so uh, there were a couple of questions that i was just going through that opposed to the panelists you know i would say uh yes of course you know physical meetings face to face meetings might you know over the next 3 weeks be difficult and everything has to be done over zoom uh but do not wait 6 months to see how this market is going to turn around because you know you have a window of opportunity to build your startup and uh, if you're thinking long term as an entrepreneur you have to assume that somewhere in your journey there is going to be one downturn for the most part very few startups are built between downturns everybody should expect to experience one and the younger of the companies now you know it's go it's better you're taking this hit now and you'll come out stronger for the long term whether you look at uber whether you look at airbnb whether you look at salesforce they all came out of the worst of the downturns at that time so this is actually a great time because nobody is going to be judging you just on random growth we're going to be you know judging on value to the customer sure uh, let me ask you this mr kanan uh, what now with consumer startups 
uh, and you know you've always focused on product startups what kind of product startups are you going to be looking at uh, in the coming year so um like you know <laughs> So, so uh, uh, year after this. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is that uh, this uh, behavior has been the COVID generation. There is also uh, uh, to get embedded in our uh, psyche. That changes behavior. Uh, the other factor is what's going to do, and there are. We're losing you. We don't know what shape was the package. So, hello. Hello. Uh, we're losing you somewhere. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, better. So I was saying that the government is also going to intervene, uh, stimuli, and that's again going to change consumer behavior. So at this point, I think uh, uh, what we clearly see is health and hygiene being top, but I think for uh, a very long time as things which are going to be much higher in the consumer uh, buying uh, interest. Uh, see, depending on how, uh, you know, it's like government intervention, etc., play out. But what, what we certainly see is that where they buy, how they shop is certainly changing. So how communicate and engage with Consumers, the fundamental shift uh, that is happening. Yeah, okay. Sarav, I'll, I'll have to uh, exit, uh, unfortunately. Uh, uh, sure. Hope that's fine. Thanks. 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 Uh, yeah. uh, Thanks a lot. Thanks. Um, Thank you for your. Thank opinion. you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Ritu. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so, uh, very quick the sectors. Uh, we quickly do this in two minutes and then I'm going to hand back to you, Saurabh, for questions with so the audience. For us, our investment thesis actually gets even more. strengthened, which is around how can we solve large problems. So I think what we are seeing clearly is this little strand of RNA is making us all change how we live. We consume, and thus uh, come through uh, our pipeline. Uh, but at the same time, there will be opportunities, and our focus will continue to be on the large problem. Before there is a shift in the way, or at least we hope there will be a not a small shift, but in a large shift on how the world consumes everything, whether it is uh, financing or it is consumer products or it is health and the delivery of those. So uh, we will continue to look at companies that are either being able to provide these kind of solutions and goods and services to very, very last mile uh, in a profitable, scalable way. It has also been said by this group in this discussion that I think we, we are hopeful that at least the next few months will bring back some frugality, which is really what startups used to be and a focus on building the business versus, versus uh, raising money only. So yes. the next round, hopefully, uh, of course, you know, entrepreneurs have to continuously raise money, but on the back of a fairly robust business model. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, so, you know, our audience are actually waiting to be, um, they ask, waiting to ask questions. So sort of let me pass it on to you. And if you can just, uh, on behalf of the audience, put some questions sure. forward. Thank you all for the very insightful discussion. Uh, Ms. Mariana, our panelist. Uh, I'm sure it was very helpful to all our attendees. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of questions uh, queued up, and we'll try to uh, 
take up as many as possible so we have uh, we have uh, one question from mr arshadi pavega uh, for uh, ms anjali bansal uh, he says i belong to uh, the tourism industry and my entire business is from the on, uh, from online customers should we continue to spend on adverts or online digital marketing as inquiries are still there but no conversion so should we keep going on spending on marketing for future business as as we have inquiries for november december uh, and so on and to be that's a very very specific question i i think there are folks who are here who are actually investors in online travel companies who can perhaps provide a more specific response to that tej or sandeep yeah, i also matter. already um i think it is a question online yeah. uh mr fire yeah, yeah. But I request these guys to sandeep i'll 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 wait in quickly uh Um, my my would wait it out i think that uh that on the plus side historically every time travel has been hit it has come back very strongly and uh i think the upside to that is is something to keep in mind so i think i assume that's what page sees and, and therefore is is coming to make my trip as well right now and uh i mean i think we we are clear trip right now it's all about conservation waiting watching um with airlines not flying hotels running empty it just doesn't make much sense to spend so I think uh, I would wait it out but take hope in the fact that it it will come. Yeah, just to add to what Sandeep said, I think uh, totally agree with him. Uh I think in travel it's going to be a V-shaped recovery. Uh so also just want to make this general point, you know, when you're looking at your business, you can see whether it's going to be a V or it's going to be a U. U means, you know, it's going to go down further for a long time and then come back up or it's going to be a L. You know, so you have to figure it out, but I think travel I, my advice is cut all marketing expense, wait it out. Um, it's going to bounce back as soon as people start traveling. Everybody is in the cage; they want to get uh, out. So that's actually my very limited point on travel is right now nobody can step out. But there is one thing: there are many things that cannot go online. Yeah. One thing that cannot go online is travel right. and holidaying. You still need to get away. It's, it's still a very physical activity, so it will come back. Uh, bide your time. Yeah, I think Sanjay also wanted to say something. uh so i actually had answered this question online almost exactly what sandeep said um i actually think that a lot of travel will be impacted even longer business travel will probably come back domestically i think domestic tourism will also come back over time if india uh manages to stay uh, safe uh, i think a lot of the exotic locations in europe for example i think the average indian consumer for tourism will be very very cautious given the um, the hit that italy and france and you know western europe are taking as well as the big tourism spots in the us like new york for example so i you know certainly uh, i think you should be very conservative with the money right now my only advice is maybe you can do some controlled experiments but do not open the tap and spend all the money now uh can we go to the next question sorda hi uh sorry so uh the next question that we have uh is for uh, is from mayura rao and it's for mr kanan uh what is your advice uh, to be taken to take advantage of deferment of demand for fnb startup post this period uh mr kanan would you like to take that up so uh, actually fnb uh, companies are going to be the Yeah, I'm trying to. I think there's some problem with my uh, internet connectivity. Actually, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, you yeah. can. Uh, so, uh, I think what we see is that uh, the food startups in our portfolio are the ones who are going to be the quickest to recover uh, because of the fact that the government is treating most of them as essentials. Uh, especially those which are uh, for consumption at home. now if you are about consumption outside the house obviously uh, you are impacted unless you are at one of the delivery platforms so i'm not seeing at this point in time for our portfolio at least a serious uh, uh, deferment of uh, demand it's a lot about getting the supply going so that they can uh, satisfy demand okay, okay. Uh
Uh, Sandeep, would you like to take this up uh, from a food startups perspective? Yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, but just, as a result, we see delivery from a variety of angles. Um, I think just it took some time to clarify and, and get the on the ground people in tune with what the intent was of allowing essential services to include food delivery. So there was a bit of a, a hiccup over the last couple of days. I do think that um, over time, though, as this settles down, the, uh, the, the idea that um, you know, there will be branded food entities that stand for a certain quality, uh, brand will, will, will carry more weight. And I think that applies across the board. Whether you look at that from a perspective of food or whether you look at that from any service provider, or any product that you're going to buy going forward. The, the fact that it stands for certain standards, stands for certain um, qualities, certain ways of manufacturing. And uh, I think in food, I think again, like everything else, if you're building something out, build, wait, get it ready. If you've got the scale already, sure, by all means, continue to run it. But uh, I think there are a few companies in that bucket. So, um, but, but I do think that if you can build something differentiated, great. The question will be, can you really have something that's differentiated? And I think that's what I would question a little bit. And um, if you believe that that's there, then by all means pursue it. But um, yeah, I, I think it should benefit overall. Yeah, to just, uh, just adding to that, as I mentioned earlier, there is this huge concern on uh, health. And what we're seeing is we are investors in a couple of uh, health food brands, Yoga Bar and Kapiva. And we're seeing actually both of them are seeing a strong uh, increase in demand. And I think this is not a temporary thing. I think there is going to be increasing concern for what you're eating and how that is helping your body handle all the problems that nature is going to throw at it. And therefore, if you're in the healthy foods or health foods area, I think that's a, a great space to be in. Sure. Um, Saurabh, next question, please. Yeah. So. Uh... Uh, we have uh, a kind of uh, follow-up question uh, for these. So, so we all are talking. This is from uh, Mr. Pawan uh, Daultani. Uh, so, we all are talking about opportunities emerging post uh, COVID. Uh, what could be those for cafes and restaurants? Uh, Sandeep, you would want to take this up. <laughs> Look, my my bias is in the cloud kitchen world, so. Um... I think that unfortunately, uh, look, I, I really don't know. I mean, honestly, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to be inspired perhaps by entrepreneurs with creative ideas for cafes and restaurants, but I mean, right now our, our approach to it has so far been to, to go with the, uh, the cloud world and, and try to see how that plays out. I'm sure that there's gonna be some tech intersection that's gonna make it interesting, but um, I, I, I think our role is to, to be inspired by the entrepreneurs to come up with the great ideas. Sure. Uh, Sanjay? Sanjay, you want to add? Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, so I just wanted to add, uh, you know, sort of at the more macro level related to that question. Uh, I think for founders, you know, a lot of people have been asking, you know, when should we be raising money, etc. What are we investing in? Right? I think the obvious thing that almost everybody in the group here will be looking at very... Uh, uh, realistically is what business is getting a tailwind due to the fallouts of COVID-19, right? So you have to think about it as an entrepreneur, even, even with your current business, if you're an existing entrepreneur, what is, uh, you know, what is the tailwind that just happened that the world tilted to your favor and you may have to rejig, you may have an adjacency to your product, something that looked like a, a vitamin in the past suddenly has become an aspirin because it's solving a huge pain point, right? So whether you're a new entrepreneur, uh, if you're a new entrepreneur, I think you should literally only be focusing on in the post-COVID world, how is my customer's problem going to be solved? And is there a agency that I need to be addressing? Because that is likely to be more attractive from an investor perspective, right? Because there's a mindset and a set uh, change. There's a DNA change. Something that was going to take five years. You know, I cannot believe that the largest of the banks are telling our fintech portfolio we will just do the meeting as a video conference. No need for you to come to Mumbai, right? Two weeks ago, that was not happening, right? So customers change and it's very important for you not to be building something for a Circa 2019 customer because there has been a step function change in the mi mindset and thought process. So right now as an investor, we are looking at, you know, is something here going to benefit from a new uh, behavioral change of the customer? And I'm sure that's true for everyone around the table here. 
So as entrepreneurs rethink, uh, you know, how you're perhaps pitching your business, how you're designing your product, a lot of your assumptions that you had might not be valid anymore uh, in the matter of these two weeks. Uh, but some of these might be temporary changes and the market will come back to the to the older model. So you need to balance those out uh, and then look at, you know, how uh, you know, the timing in terms of a fundraise. Definitely from an investor perspective, you know, fundraising right now, we will focus on companies that are going to benefit right now. I'm going to add two points to this discussion, which is sort of going beyond restaurants in some ways is, See, already governments around the world, and uh, including government of India, the last couple of days, massive activity in ensuring that supply lines continue. So if you are in a business that caters to essential needs of people, those businesses will never go away. Uh, and the way we have seen industry actually come together, whether it is startups uh, and government and various arms of government, various ministries at the highest level, at the local level, I think has been absolutely unprecedented. So there are some very good outcomes and some silver linings to the situation. And there are, there are some ways of working that are emerging where there is a joint industry government effort. We have actually seen much more of a leaning towards, and this is both government and large companies, since I'm involved with large companies also, they are seeking solutions which are non-physical in nature. So companies that need to now move goods and services uh, yeah. whether it is to enterprise customers or to consumers, retail consumers are looking for digital solutions to that. So SaaS type businesses, uh, technology platform enabled food delivery, um, and we should chat after this, Sandeep, for sure. Um, I think those are going to see uh, more of a flip than before because for large solutions, now technology is a given. And those that are able to use this, in some ways use this opportunity to both do good but also do well in business will come out stronger. So I think that is one thing around government. And the second point is large enterprises are going to now start looking much more aggressively for solutions. And we might even see a new set of investors emerge in some ways, uh, different exit opportunities. And I would encourage hence for uh, entrepreneurs, the best ideas come from entrepreneurs, not from us. I would encourage them to think about how will, how we live, how we work and how we consume change. And that's where I think the next set of opportunities will sit. Yeah, I just uh, want to add a little bit on that too. I think, uh, I think Sandeep also alluded is basically if you can marry tech with, um, with food, like uh, Luckin Coffee is a great example in China, mm -hmm. uh, which just uh, in two and a half years became uh, uh, you know, $2.5 billion company. Um, I mean, I should have joined them then Fosun is sometimes what I think is uh, it's amazing how they grew. And that was, you know, basically the consumption is still there, but we just have to deliver it in a more efficient way. And that's what Luckin did. You know, everybody orders coffee and they ordered that in, in, at, uh, at your doorstep with the, with, the, with the cost, which can be done because the clusters are pretty good in China. So you can do it um, and in a cost effective manner. So the opportunity exists, just you have to think about it differently. If you're opening another cafe, then I think it's no big deal, but, if you are bringing some element of it, that would be good. Also, just want to add that the guy who started Luck and Coffee actually used to run um, in, uh, in China, uh, which is the car renting company. So he understood logistics uh, very well. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. if you think about it, even in the last day, all the essential supply orders that have come out mention all the online companies mining because hmm. they are able to both uh, procure food, prepare food, and this is... Uh, Rebel Foods, um, Swiggy, Zomato, etc. Uh, medicine companies that are online, so the MedLife and the Apollos and the mm -hmm. so on and so forth, as well as logistics companies that can create the first mile, last mile, as well as the line hall, so delivery and shadow fax and so on and so forth. Those are the companies that are getting the essential orders to even now move around. And needless to say, Big Basket, Grofers, Mick Basket. So, and I'm not just saying that these are the companies that you should try and replicate. But in moments of crisis, we are turning as a society towards businesses that can provide high quality consistently at scale digitally. Yeah. yeah. No, I would just think about a couple of, that, uh, I, I, I think that I'm, I'm hopeful that, um, I'm hopeful that as we come out of this, perhaps there's a new way of measuring the uh, value of businesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think today we look at, let's say, revenue growth, eyeballs, customers, maybe 
maybe profits at, at some case. But I think that if anything, if 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 as a as an economy, as a society, as a world, you can add a dimension that kind of talks about impact that it's having um, in a negative or a positive way, and that gets attributed into how values is is is, is uh, considered. Because I think it's becoming evident that you know actually sitting here right now, the businesses that are on the right side of these things are going to be in a better place to be able to, to manage things going forward. And I think that I'm, I would be surprised if regulation didn't come out that made it in some way even more imminent and important for businesses to be thinking about these things. And therefore, by virtue of that value will be ascribed to those businesses that are there. So I think it'll be a, an interesting time for companies also to, to look at how, how do they prioritize that aspect of it and what impact will that have on the types of companies that come about next. Can I add another aspect to this whole conversation? Um, I think uh, we know for many of the companies out there, uh, revenues are going to get hit. Yeah, revenues are going to get hit for most of the companies. I think it's about how the entrepreneurs handle the downturn and how they come out of it. I think that's going to be very interesting for us as investors. And we're really going to look at uh, entrepreneurs, uh, back entrepreneurs who we think have really dealt with the crisis in a very, very constructive way. Uh, last questions, uh, Saurabh? Yeah, so we have a very interesting question from uh, Prasanti Atupuri. Uh, given whatever has happened, I think this is, uh, this is a question that, uh, how, do you, how do you see home healthcare solutions for business going forward from now on? All that, uh, now that everyone has been uh, you know, made very uh, conscious about um, hygiene and uh, health at home. Right? So, yeah. Okay. I, uh, I'll take a first stab at that. We actually have a company in the space, a um, company called uh, Empine, which is doing, you know, teleconsult. Uh, yesterday, actually, I think the government uh, uh, fast tracked the release of a set of guidelines for, uh, you know, for tele teleconsult. Uh, this is again something that has changed materially, right? This thing would have taken, you know, two to three years perhaps, but now has suddenly got accelerated. Uh, so, uh, you know, healthcare in general, you know, and also the India Stack team or the iSpirit team has been working with the government on the national health stack, uh, which was also, you know, uh, tied into the overall um, um, uh, Aishman Bharat program from the, you know, the, uh, or, you know, availability of uh, health insurance for the masses. So the entire health care industry uh, is going to see, uh, again, a lot of digitization that will happen. That will, uh, so just FYI, India uh, as a country has got somewhere between four and 6,000 cardiologists and we are adding 250 a year, right? By the, to have the same density as the US, which has also not got a very deep enough density, we need to have 88,000 cardiologists, right? So if you're adding 250 a year, it's going to take 40 years, assuming all the existing cardiologists are still alive and serving to get the density of the US. So the only way this will get solved is through technology. What will happen now is through digitization and technology that is going to be accelerated uh, substantially, right? Because the acceptance of digitization, and this is whether it's healthcare, education, logistics, food delivery, essential services, things that, you know, however we want to call them as essential services. Uh, all of these are really essential services that we are going to deliver life around. And now is the opportunity for the tech industry to say, boy, this is the best time for these to get digitized, right? The market has moved forward five years. If you're an entrepreneur, that's the takeaway you should have from today's meeting. It is like, you know, thanks to coronavirus, the market has moved forward five years. Yes, in the short run, you're worried about survival. But the macro thing that has happened, we could never have achieved with billions of dollars of VC investment and marketing and trying to buy business, right? This is what the market has forced. So step back, you know, look at the next three to six months and say, okay, how do I make sure that my business is alive? And then look at what has materially changed and how do you go after it? I think that's the biggest, uh, one thing you should take away from my side, at least that would be the big message. Yeah. I just want to add to that. I'm I going think... to have to step out, unfortunately. So it's past one. I'm sorry about that. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. To get on to. Okay, so, yeah. Thank you all. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, Ritu, yeah. that goes for me as well. I need to step out as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kanan. Bye then. Bye-bye. Bye. So I just want to add that. Uh, yeah.
Uh, there's a pivotal moment for each business, as Sanjay said it, but this, I think, is for healthcare. Uh, this the demonetization was for digital payments. Uh, there's a great moment for healthcare businesses. Uh, I think just to throw one number out there is that we have one bed uh, for almost 2,000 uh, patients. And this is how under uh, penetrated, uh, you know, we are in terms of India. Uh, so I think th this this opportunity of COVID is going to make people think from across the uh, government and to the private sector on how to serve people. Uh, there is amazing initiative that China did um, during the COVID time, which is to put a health QR code for each and every person, uh, which actually explains if you can step out, take a plane or not. You know, right now shutting down flight was the only option, but if you have a healthcare QR code, you can go to the airport, you can show the healthcare QR code. If it is green, you are okay to travel. If it is not, and you have to sit back. I think what uh, Sanjay was referring to the to the stack, healthcare stack, I hope they think through that. Uh, I think it is very essential to change healthcare. We will, I'm telling you, we will be hit by, um, unfortunately, more viruses uh, in the coming um, you know, few years. And we need to be better, much better prepared. Sure. Thank you, Tej. Um, there's one other last thing. I just wanted to make okay, a point sir, that yeah, you yeah. know the world was dependent on China for manufacturing. That will change, right? Because yeah. you know that. So that's another thing for entrepreneurs to think about. Sure, we have, the supply chains are going to move. So thank you very much to all the panelists. I think this was a wonderful discussion. Certainly gives us a sense of what to expect. So some of my best takeaways from uh, this discussion was really that. It's time to build up more digital businesses. Uh, physical businesses uh, need to change and they need to think in non-physical ways. Education, healthcare, uh, they look very, very promising in the coming times. Um, of course, for startups uh, who are already existing, it's time for frugality. We need not overspend, sit on cash, because that's where, um, you know, that's only going to be your differentiator versus the rest. And I think uh, technology solution businesses would certainly do very well because all physical, physically enabled businesses would require now digital solutions in order to move faster. Uh, so primarily these uh, are some of the best takeaways from the conference, uh, from this conference and the discussion that we had. Thank you very much Sanjay, Tej, Sandeep for joining us today and making this, uh, you know, at least uh, giving us a filter of what to expect and how to move things forward. Appreciate your time. Thank you, I hope. Uh... I hope this is the, the future of conferences. <laughs> Absolutely. We hope so too. <laughs> you don't have to Thank come. You. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Take care, guys. All the best. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Sanjay. Bye-bye.